Welcome to Daily Scripture and Meditation with Shirley Sellies Jackson. We begin, as always, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Today is Wednesday, 2020, December 16th, and it is the third week of Advent. Our Daily Prayer Lord Jesus, you are the fulfillment of all our hopes and desires. Set my heart aflame with the fire of your love and with the power of the Holy Spirit that I may boldly witness the joy of the gospel and serve your kingdom wherever you place me. Our Daily Scripture Jesus Christ confronts every imaginable poverty and evil. He cures the blind, the lame, the lepers, the deaf. Even the dead find new life in Him. When we are afflicted by our weaknesses and by our sins, He says, Turn to me and be safe. We bend the knee to the Lord and we find in Him vindication and glory. Let the clouds rain down. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 45, verse 6. I am the Lord, there is no other. I form the light and create the darkness. I make well-being and create woe. I, the Lord, do all these things. Let justice descend, O heavens, like dew from above. Like gentle rain, let the skies drop it down. Let the earth open and salvation bud forth. Let justice also spring up. I, the Lord, have created this. For thus says the Lord, the creator of the heavens, who is God, the designer and maker of the earth, who established it, not creating it to be a waste, but designing it to be lived in. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Who announced this from the beginning and foretold it from of old? Was it not I, the Lord, besides whom there is no other God? There is no just and saving God but me. Turn to me and be safe, all you ends of the earth, for I am God, there is no other. By myself I swear, uttering my just decree and my unalterable word. To me every knee shall bend, by me every tongue shall swear, saying, Only in the Lord are just deeds and power. Before him in shame shall come all who vent their anger against him. In the Lord shall be the vindication and the glory of all the descendants of Israel. The Word of the Lord Thanks be to God. Psalm 85 Let the clouds rain down the just one, and the earth bring forth a Savior. I will hear what God proclaims the Lord, for He proclaims peace to His people. Near indeed is His salvation to those who fear Him, glory dwelling in our land. Kindness and truth shall meet, justice and peace shall kiss. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and justice shall look down from heaven. The Lord himself will give his benefits. Our land shall yield its increase. Justice shall walk before him, and salvation along the way of his steps. Let the clouds rain down the just one, and the earth bring forth a Savior. Alleluia, alleluia. Raise your voice and tell the good news. Behold, the Lord God comes with power. Alleluia, alleluia. Go back and tell John what you have seen and heard. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke, chapter 7, verse 18. At that time, John summoned two of his disciples and sent them to the Lord to ask, Are you the one who is to come, or should I look for another? When the men came to the Lord, they said, John the Baptist has sent us to you to ask, Are you the one who is to come, or should we look for another? 
At that time, Jesus cured many of their diseases, sufferings, and evil spirits. He also granted sight to many who were blind, and Jesus said to them in reply, Go and tell John what you have seen and heard. The blind regain their sight, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, the poor have the good news proclaimed to them. And blessed is the one who takes no offense at me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Meditation of the Day from the Magnificat He is the One. Jesus is the Word made flesh. Jesus is the bread of life. Jesus is the victim offered for our sins on the cross. Jesus is the sacrifice offered at the Holy Mass for the sins of the world and mine. Jesus is the word to be spoken. Jesus is the truth to be told. Jesus is the way to be walked. Jesus is the light to be lit. Jesus is the life to be lived. Jesus is the love to be loved. Jesus is the joy to be shared. Jesus is the sacrifice to be offered. Jesus is the peace to be given. Jesus is the bread of life to be eaten. Jesus is the hungry to be fed. Jesus is the thirsty to be satiated. Jesus is the naked to be clothed. Jesus is the homeless to be taken in. Jesus is the sick to be healed. Jesus is the lonely to be loved. This was written by St. Therese of Calcutta, who died in 1997 and founded the Missionaries of Charity and won the Nobel Peace Prize. Reflections and Actionable Challenges from Our Scriptural Readings Introductory Prayer Lord, you are always present to me in my walking and in my sleeping, but I am not always present to you. Forgive my inattentiveness to you, Jesus, my Creator and Redeemer. Thank you for the gifts of life, my faith in you, my family, and the many other gifts you have granted me. I wish you to be the center of my life despite the countless times I put myself first. I love you and long to draw nearer to you in my prayers and actions. Our Petition Jesus, help me to discover your loving hand in my daily life. Our First Challenge Are we to wait for another? He came to his own, and his own people did not accept him. John 1.1 This is perhaps one of the saddest phrases in Scripture. The desired of nations came to those who should have desired him most, but they did not recognize him. Yet, if we are not careful, this can occur on a daily basis in our own lives. In our desire to make spiritual progress, we might be turning a deaf ear to the voice of conscience and the lights of the Holy Spirit because we are looking for bigger, more spectacular opportunities to love God. We are caught looking for something else while He is coming to us in the most ordinary circumstances, loving my spouse, children, parents, or peers. Second challenge, go and tell John what you have seen and heard. Jesus appeals to reason in order to elicit a deeper response of faith. To summarize his message for John, you will know a tree by its fruit. John has already heard of the works of Christ. So why does Jesus reemphasize what John already knows? Precisely because we do not always know how to discover the works of God in our daily lives at first glance. It is as if to say, 
Open your eyes and your ears to learn the ways of God. I am constantly at work in your life. Discover my action. Hear my voice, and you will come to see my plan for you. Third challenge. And blessed is the one who takes no offense at me. Remember this statement is directed to the greatest man born of woman. Therefore it must not frighten us that the paths God chooses are sometimes quite mysterious to us. Israel needed John's testimony, yet he spends his last days in prison, hidden from the public eye. What a waste of much needed talent! This is the cry of reason, unaided by faith. Doesn't God understand how important John is to the equation? Doesn't he know that we need good leaders in society and in the church? Doesn't he know that my husband, my wife, or my child is too young to die? Doesn't he know? It is a subtle temptation to question whether God actually cares about justice in our daily lives or whether his plan is truly the best option. Satan loves leading us down that labyrinth path, but faith enables us to cling to the truth that God is indeed all-powerful and all-loving. God gives us an enlightened vision to find the way and travel it safely. Am I always able to count my blessings no matter what happens in my life? Conversation with Christ Lord, I believe in you because you are always faithful to your promises. You never promised that life would be easy, but you did promise that you would give me the grace to carry the cross you asked me to bear. Sometimes I simply do not want to carry it. Help me to bear it generously with faith and love. Mother most pure, make my heart only for Jesus. Our resolution. Today I will visit the Blessed Sacrament and recite the Creed. If I cannot make it to visit our Lord, then I will present myself to Him in the quiet of my heart and recite the same. Meditation. How can we know that Jesus is who He claims to be, the Son of God, the promised Messiah, and Savior of the world? Is our faith a blind leap we must take without certainty or proof? John the Baptist sent his disciples to question Jesus about his claim to be God's anointed Messiah. Did John have doubts about Jesus and his claim to divinity? Not likely, since John had earlier revealed Jesus' mission at the River Jordan when he exclaimed, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. John 1.29 John saw from a distance what Jesus would accomplish through his atoning sacrifice on the cross, our redemption from bondage to sin, condemnation, and death, and our adoption as sons and daughters of God and citizens of the kingdom of heaven. John very likely sent his disciples to Jesus because he wanted to hear and see firsthand for themselves the signs and proof that the Messiah had indeed come in the person of Jesus, who was sent by the Father in heaven and anointed by the Spirit at the River Jordan. The Messiah performs the signs of God's kingdom power. The miracles which Jesus performed and the message he proclaimed about the coming of God's kingdom in his person was a direct fulfillment of what the prophets had foretold many centuries before. Isaiah 29:18 and 35:5. Isaiah had prophesied that the Messiah would come in the power of the Holy Spirit to bring freedom and new life for all who were oppressed by afflictions, infirmities, sin and guilt, and demonic spirits. Isaiah 61, 1. Jesus came in the power of God's kingdom to release those bound up by sin, fear, and hopelessness. His miracles and exorcisms are direct signs of God's power and presence, and they confirm 
that the Father has sent His only begotten Son to be our Messiah, which means the Anointed One and Savior. Through Jesus' atoning death on the cross and through the power of His resurrection, we receive the first fruits of God's kingdom, the forgiveness of our sins, adoption as sons and daughters of God, new life in the Holy Spirit, and the promise that we will be raised to everlasting life with God in His kingdom. The gospel is good news for all who receive it and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you know and witness to others the joy and good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ? Lord Jesus, you are the fulfillment of all our hopes and desires. Set my heart aflame with the fire of your love and with the power of the Holy Spirit that I may boldly witness the joy of the gospel and serve your kingdom wherever you place me. The One and Only I am God, there is no other. Isaiah 45, 22 Does your life and Christmas depend on anyone or anything other than Jesus? The Lord says, I am the Lord, there is no other. Isaiah 45, 6 The Lord proclaims, there is no other God besides Him. Isaiah 45, 21 He says, there is no just and saving God but me. Isaiah 45, 21 The first of the Ten Commandments says, You shall not have other gods besides me. Exodus 20, 3, Deuteronomy 5, 7. Therefore we should pray and live. Only in God is my soul at rest. From Him comes my salvation. He only is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold. Psalm 62, 2. Jesus is the only name by which we can be saved. Acts 4.12 And our only Master and Lord. Jude 4 He is the only way to the Father. John 14.6 Therefore we should say, Only in the Lord are just deeds and powers. Isaiah 45.24 Many Christians' Christmases depend upon almost wholly on family, friends, presents, parties, money, food, or pleasures. While we thank the Lord for all His temporal gifts, we are not to depend on them, even slightly. Christmas and life mean Christ. Philippians 1.21 If we were like Job, if we lost everything but the Lord, If we became impoverished and starving, alone and bereaved, we could still have Christmas because nothing can separate us from Christ's love. Romans 8.35 Jesus Christ is our only need in life. Our Prayer Father, thank you for loving me so much that you gave me your only Son. May I believe in him and love him totally. God's promise to us. The blind recover their sight, cripples walk, lepers are cured. The deaf hear, dead men are raised to life, and the poor have the good news preached to them. Luke 7.22 Thomas A. Kempis, quote, from the Imitation of Christ, who, humbly approaching to the fountain of sweetness, doth not carry thence some little sweetness? Or who, standing by a copious fire, doth not derive therefrom some little heat? And thou art a fountain ever full and overflowing. Thou art a fire always burning and never failing. We are God's hands, feet, and voice. May his peace rest upon you as you go and announce the gospel of the Lord in your words and deeds. Thank you for joining today. Abundant blessings upon you and yours. Amen. 
We close as always in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.